dissecting needle. Thank you. There you go. Okay. Are we ready? Yes, Professor Wilson on dissecting a cat. <laughs> okay. So when you first start doing the cats, um, you'll see varying degrees of tissue and layering. And so you'll want to get to the muscle layer, which is what we're really trying to look at. Right here we see connective tissue. It'll look white. Some yellowish. We might have some adipose tissue in here, although this cat didn't look like it had a lot of extra fat. But you're going to want to start getting in there and pulling off that tough, dense regular connective tissue that makes up the fascia on these muscles. And it's not necessarily an easy job. I really like teasing needles because if you tease, you can get an edge of some connective tissue and give it a good yank and you can peel quite a bit off that way. Okay, so those teasing needles or dissecting needles, but I like to call them teasing needles, they really are helpful because they're not going to do so much damage that you're really going to be into your deeper layers, but they're going to give you enough of a head start. You can peel a layer at a time so we can get this outer layer. I now know that I'm getting um, more muscle because when I stretch this out, I can see fiber directions. I can see the arrangement of the fascicles, the bundles of muscle fibers that are in that. And I can see right here the direction is like this, and then I have almost a line right here, and then the direction is slightly different. So I'm going at this angle and this angle. Similar, but not exactly the same, so two different muscles. Okay, so what we want to do is look in your lab manual. Can you, can you uh, medical examiners here, tell me what muscles you think these might be? You have your lab manual open to the page that has those on there. What, what would you suggest that might be? These two? The well, look at the picture. Which part of this picture looks like this sort of triangular shape right here? And then next to it, similar direction, but slightly different angle. So this. Like oh, that looks pretty good. So what are those? The pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. Excellent. So this is the pectoralis major right here. Okay. Okay. And here is the pectoralis minor right here. Does that seem sort of odd? What's odd about that? Major, minor. It's They're minor's opposite. larger. Yeah. yeah. The minor is actually bigger than the major. But it's... it's Named in people first. Oh. Then when, when we were identifying cat parts, oh, well, this is the major. This is the, the same job that the major does in people. So we'll, we'll leave it the major, but even though it's smaller than the minor. Normally a major muscle should be bigger than a minor muscle. But a little different in the cat. Okay? What else is different be, about the pectoralis major and minor in the cat versus people? Do you remember from yesterday when we looked at pictures? Where's the pec major on a person? Well, where is this on the cat? How would you describe this area? Chest. Yeah. So it's also in the in people. It's in the chest. In people, the pectoralis major is superficial, and the pectoralis minor is deep. So the pectoralis major goes over the pectoralis minor. Whereas in the cat, where are they? On top of each other. They're they're next to each other instead of layered. So this this we would say this is cranial, and this is caudal, or we could say that this is anterior in the cat. And this is posterior in the cat to this muscle. Um, in people, we stand upright, so we would say this is superior in a person. This would be inferior. But in, in people, these muscles stack instead of being next to one another. Okay. Okay. And then you, I'm going to let you guys look and see if you can find a couple of those other. There's some other chest muscles in here. This one got cut a little bit. Um, so compare to this side over here. See if you can tease away some of this white stuff and see the muscle fibers right in here. Why don't you pause that for a while or stop?